Hey everyone, welcome to this video. Today we are in Kilmarnock. Yes, Kilmarnock, Scotland. Going to do a burger challenge. Just a burger challenge. A burger in Scotland. My first burger in Scotland. Not that I've eaten too many items in Scotland, but nonetheless, guys. So for this challenge, we are actually in the quest for a 100 pound prize. Yes, we're hoping to win 100 pounds, which is their currency, uh, which is a, a worth a bit more than, uh, I think it's, I don't know, maybe 120 American dollars right now, and or maybe about 140 or 150 Canadian. So pretty cool. Um, so for this challenge, we do actually have to beat the record in order to get the cash prize. The standard time limit though is a 30 minutes, but in order to get the cash, you have to beat it. Now this challenge has only been defeated uh, twice before, I believe. Uh, one by Mr. Steel Rod Redeem, once by Randy Santel. Oh, and uh, my friend Scott's gonna be here today. He's gonna give it an attempt. So hopefully we will both be able to beat it. Um, that being said, since it is a record, we can only do the challenge one at a time. Um, but nonetheless, so we're going to head on in, have some fun, eat some food. So what is this? They call it the Krusty Cobb Burger. So it is an incredibly large crusty buns. Um, crusty buns. I don't know if that sounds, I don't know how that sounds. Let me know how that sounds down below. But besides the crusty buns, then we have multiple pounds of beef, literally pounds and pounds and pounds of cheese. We have some sauces, and uh, I'll give you the exact details here momentarily. So let's go have some fun, hopefully win some cash, and let's go eat. Hi everyone, so here we are with the burger, definitely very big, so the Krusty Cobb. Guys, as said in the name, I'm sure this bread is pretty crusty. Although, I will say, although it's a very, very, very large bun, it feels not, you know, it feels pretty soft, so I'm excited for that. Um, again, we have their huge, 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 massive house-made patties. We have all the bacon, we have their burger sauce, a whole bunch of cheese and uh, lettuce, and I think that's pretty much it. Oh, and some onion rings as well. So yeah, guys, like we said, uh, we are going to have to beat that record roughly 24-ish minutes. Um, and at that, that's pretty much about that. So we might as well get started here. And I do believe we, uh, we actually do have an hour to complete this to get it for free, but we only get 100 pounds if we like beat the record. So fingers crossed, hopefully we can do it. And uh, yeah, guys, let's give it a rock, give it a roll. I'm excited. Hi everybody, so uh, sorry, correction, it was 23.06 is the time we gotta be. Okay, Whew. so I gotta get, I know this is gonna be hard. Um, we're definitely gonna have to get some work in. It's not easy doing two challenges back to back, so. I'll see what I can do. Also, shout out Vimto. I've never had it before, and I tried it, it was very, very good. It is a fizzy. It is a fizzy here in uh, Scotland and the UK. I'm gonna try to start with this beef. I think the temperature's good. Anyway, so how about we get started? Two, one, let's eat. Mm. Good flavor burger. Hey everyone, welcome to Zero. Today we are in Scotland. Yes, everybody, Scotland, United Kingdom. So glad to be across the pond finally. After many a years of requests, it is great to be over here doing some challenges and very happy to finally make it up to Scotland. It tastes like, um, like Worcestershire sauce or Worcestershire sauce, depending on where you're from. So here we had the Krusty Cobb Burger. Again, it had only been defeated two times prior to this day, and then my friend Scott was able to beat it. Um, so three times prior to my attempt in the four or five years of his existence, which definitely goes to show the difficulty of this challenge, being both in size and just difficulty eating, I guess. One minute, we're gonna do a shop and focus, so. But that's just very good. As I alluded to earlier in the video, we did do a challenge directly before this, being the Hogan's Monster Breakfast Sandwich. They have a big Scottish breakfast sandwich, which I did directly before this. I literally did not even leave the table, to be honest. And they brought the burger over to us. So it was a lot of food. I knew I was really going to have to focus if I was going to somehow actually be able to complete this because, well, it's really hard to eat not only like two challenges back to back, 
but just this much food in general. And especially when I not only had to, you know, let's say eat this in an hour or something, I had to beat the current record in order to get that cash prize, which that current record was about 23 minutes. So I knew I really had to focus, kind of just shut up and eat. Yes, guys, I actually shut up and ate for once. I knew some talking stuff. You don't have to be dead quiet or anything about me. Oh. Hey, I'm glad you enjoy it. All right, delicious beef. I'm gonna try to get this other one down too. Loads of cheese on there. Loads of cheese, loads of bacon. And then again, the burger sauce, which is kind of like a mayonnaise ketchup mustard mix. So I'm gonna save the buns for last. That's where I think that, well, don't get me wrong. I'm not underestimating difficulty about that, that's especially where it's going to come into play. We have on the ketchup. And I'm all about that ketchup. The strategy was the strategy I normally go into with all my burger challenges. I prefer to start with the meat and then kind of move on to everything else, like the beef, I should say, because um, there was some bacon, which I guess is technically meat. I figured that, you know, well, I was hoping the bread wouldn't be too bad. Um, let's just say you're going to have to watch and see how that turned out. Shout out this Vimto, though. What I love about the United Kingdom going to new places is all the different items, like this Vimto soda or fizzy, as they call it. Yes, guys, they actually call a soft drink, a, a soda, a pop, a fizzy over here. Let me know down below what you actually call, like, a Coca-Cola. Very friendly, right? So, very friendly. I know. Canadians are supposed to be friendly. Four minutes in, everybody. Yeah. Hi, boy, Joel. Yes, look, he's got a one up here there. I was additionally armed with some ketchup, which is the red bottle, and in the brown bottle is what they call brown sauce, which, although there is apparently no actual name for it besides brown sauce, I found it tasted like a plum sauce we'd get in North America that you'd find in a lot of kind of uh, Chinese slash American, like American Chinese cuisine, uh, often with, you know, some sort of like a dumpling or a egg roll or something like that plum sauce. That's very much what it was like, kind of sweet kind of fruity but apparently in scotland it is brown sauce so i mean hey like i said all these amazing unique um kind of just subtle differences you get to experience when you travel the world <coughs> five minutes in almost got the patties down and then just the buns a little fun again I definitely have to give a huge thanks to the staff here. They were super friendly. We actually went into this day only um, being told we were able to do one challenge um, because we, although we tried to give them notice the day before, it didn't get properly communicated and they didn't have these buns or like crusty cob breads upon arrival. So we only thought we were able to do the breakfast. However, then once we started doing the breakfasts, they were really excited about it. And so they offered to see if they could actually go get a crusty cob bun from the local bakery they get it at. And I was like, uh, yes, please. And they were able to do that, which was awesome because it was an incredibly rainy day. Yes, can you believe it was raining in Scotland? That was a joke, everybody. There was a lot of rain in Scotland, let's put it that way. And it was quite cold. Six minutes. Get some of this bread and bacon down. But at that, everybody, I believe that's all the information with the included commentary. So with that, ultimately, let's tune on in. Let us see what happens. Stops already is good, isn't it? What's that? No, it's not even close. Sure. Well, let's see if we can get that 100 pound or 100 quid prize. And let me know down below, everybody. Do you like mayonnaise on your burger? Because there's a lot of this burger sauce in here and it's kind of like a flavored mayo. So let me know down below. All right guys, let's get started in this bun. Roughly, I don't know how much time we are. Can we get the timer going on? Timer? Eight 
15. This bread's gonna take a little work. That bread. I don't like it all. About to do work. Okay. Ooh. There's some texture to that bread. That's for sure. Yeah. Lots of abundant onions left, guys. Carmen and I were at about 11.45. <laughs> About 14 minutes in, getting through the buns, guys. Shout out to Vimto. The Vimto is what's making this happen. This is the secret. It has nothing to do with my skill, ability, dedication, or the great food. Nope, all Vimto. No, I'm just kidding. Great food, definitely somebody there. Not today, tomorrow. Yeah. Gotta sleep after this one. Yeah. Seventeen oh seven. Eighteen and a half minutes. Definitely need to get that bread down. Definitely provides a bit of a jaw workout. That was We're gonna do our last bite at in 
another minute. We got some scraps here we gotta clean up after. Shrapnel. Yeah, that's the shrapnel. Make sure we're nice and clean. No, I'm not done. I'm not done. Still got food in my mouth. Gotta, gotta swallow. Alright guys, so 2215. I still got food in my mouth. I still gotta swallow. But I'm gonna take this brief intermission to wipe my hands. I've done that all challenge. I still got food in my mouth. Really enjoying chewing all that cheese up. Make sure we got every dot. Then we're done, right on 23 minutes. So that everybody, that was very, very delicious. Big burger, I really like the taste of the burger patties. It's like a Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire. Really enjoyed it. Like I said, uh, bacon was good. I like the bacon they have here. Um, the bacon is of a uh, like different style than we do in North America. It reminds me more of like what some place, what people call like a female bacon, just the cut. You, know, you have the full loin, plus then some of the fat portion, which is pretty cool. With that guys, for that we do get the Meal for free, we also get 100 pounds, pretty cool. Whew. I'm pretty full, I'll put it that way. It's quite a lot of burger, quite a lot of food. Thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. So a huge thanks to everybody here. Super friendly people in Scotland, guys. I have absolutely no complaints. The town is real cool and uh, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but this is actually the home of Johnny Walker uh, like whiskey. And also it is the, uh, the gentleman who created penicillin went to the university here. So basically they have everything to cure your ailments come from Kilmarnock? Kilmer Kilmarnock. Kilmarnock. Sorry guys, my pronunciation. Kilmarnock. Kilmarnock. But that one, like I said, pretty cool. Uh, if you want to come try it for yourself, you do have 23 minutes. To do so, you get 100 pounds and a free meal. And that's about that. So huge thanks to all the staff here. They've been absolutely excellent. Uh, that Vim, Vimto was absolutely delicious. I'm definitely gonna get some more of that before I leave the UK. And this Pepsi Max. This actually tastes different than the Pepsi Max we have in uh, North America. It's a little, uh, I wanna say it's slightly less carbonated. And it's quite a bit sweeter. Interesting. And things are different in certain regions. Not everything, but uh, like for example, Cheerios, for example, have more salt in Canada than they do in the USA. Fun fact, Canadians like their salty palates. I do, at least. So that everyone, like I said, that's it. I have no other words. That's about that, so. I'm just gonna stop talking. Have a lovely day. Yeah, say happy and hungry. Happy eating, have a lovely day. I had a run and we were actually in Dumfurlin, uh, basically a little bit just outside Edinburgh. And uh, guess what guys, we came to support a good friend. Let me hop over here. And look what we got going here guys. The one, the only, excuse me gentlemen, Sorry. the legend, Mr. Randy Santel. Look at that guy, look at that guy. And Miss Katina. So guys, we did get a we did get a cross with them. Luckily, very We're blessed. Dumb Furlan the Scotland and Katina. He's doing a challenge. We are not joining him for a challenge, but super excited to get a cross pass with him on this side of the world. So nothing wrong with that. Super cool. And we'll uh, get rocking and rolling as Randy crushes this giant, giant, giant breakfast challenge. And lots of people here to support him here today. Or the city cafe, but you can probably do two of those. What was that? Actually, no, you could probably do three of them. Uh, it's the oldest challenge in uh, Edinburgh. To dominate everything here. This massive Lizzie Scottish breakfast challenge. Who? I don't even know where to start. I'm most thankful that 
there's 10 slices of bread, but really there's 10 halves. So there's five slices of bread. We do have pretty much 10 of everything else though. There are 10 hash browns, that's okay. I love Scottish, all the hash browns around here. We've got 10 scrambled eggs. We've got uh, 10 lorem sausages, which are proper Scottish. We've got 10 other sausages, which are locally sourced. And then, what else do we have on here? I think that explains everything. Bacon, oh we do, yes. We've got 10 rashers of bacon here that I think I'm gonna make sandwiches with, with this bread. And then we've got a whole bunch of healthy vegetables with this fry up. We've got 10 things of mushrooms. Those look delicious. I don't think I've had mushrooms like this as part of a breakfast challenge yet. And then we do have 10 tomato slices or five full tomatoes. And then we've got pretty much 800 grams like a whole tin, basically, of baked beans. I'm gonna use some of the juices and stuff from that to help get some of this food down. And then this is optional. I've got most of the ketchup in Scotland, which I'm gonna make Katina proud by having some of this. I think I'm gonna need to dip some of these. Domination. Everybody, we are downtown Edinburgh, Edinburgh, Scotland, guys. And there are so many interesting looking buildings we're going to show you on. We actually have a fringe festival going on here, so the streets are very busy, full of all kinds of things, all kinds of vendors. We're heading to Edinburgh Castle, uh, which is by far one of the most well known sites. But, guys, look at these buildings. It is ultra, um, like, old, <laughs> gothic. Uh, thanks, my friend. Look, just look at these. Look at some of these, the top of these buildings. Honestly, this is probably maybe the coolest city I've ever been in yet, based on what we saw driving in. And we have lots more sights to see, so let's show you all those. And Scott, what do you think of it? Yeah, it's crazy. There's just so much going on right now, it's insane. Yeah, so let's uh, continue trekking on. Look at, like, I, I, again, I don't even know what these buildings are, but they are huge and awesome so let's continue this and we're on the royal mile everybody this is not only a very famous noted street guys but the architecture is insane right in the heart of the city uh, it is close to like driving and pedestrian only which is very suited considering the conditions but look at like some of these buildings like they are truly breathtaking just this freaking uh you know it's not really showing you because it's so dark but gorgeous gorgeous church there and uh yeah we're gonna get up hopefully to the castle here momentarily but definitely a city like i've never seen before Ultra, you know, kind of oldie. They call it gothic. It's impressive. So despite the sign and all of the uh, advertisements saying that they allow entry to the castle until 5, we showed up and they said they stopped at 4.30, which was BS because it's about 4.40. So I'm calling BS on that Edinburgh. Edinburgh? Sorry guys, but that was bull. Uh, anyway, there's... Some other sites we'll see. Again, we're still in the Royal Mile here, which is, it is really, really cool. Um, again, there's this great big, I don't even know what this building is, this castle looking church. And uh, we'll find other things to see. There's lots to see. Pretty much everything is interesting. So, no castle, but we'll see what we can find. And of course, we have a guy playing bagpipes. I, uh, I don't mean to be that person and feed that stereotype, but hey, I mean, it, he's playing them down here. And then we have all these cool statues, like that big thing. Over this way, we got all these guys and these big squares and the buildings. It's literally like, uh, interestingly enough, literally everywhere we look, everywhere we go, is something to see. And they'll only continue. So uh, I guess, you know, no castle, but this is probably one of the most interesting looking cities I've ever been to, so we'll continue on our 
on our little tour of literally just walking around and seeing what Edinburgh has to go. All right, everybody, and here we are going into St. Giles, which is a very large church, very, very pretty. Um, kind of similar architecture and quite resembling what we saw in the Glasgow Cathedral. Uh, I will say incredibly in-depth, sophisticated stained glass. Like, I mean, I'm assuming that's newer than, you know, some of this, uh, you know, most recent building and everything. But, oh my gosh, these are stunning and just amazing stained glass. You just have to appreciate that artwork and that. We'll continue to walk around and see more of this, but really, really cool. Uh, it definitely is a lot more modern. Like, this has definitely been more renoed redone than compared to the Glasgow Cathedral, um, but nonetheless, still very cool, still very, very beautiful, and uh, we'll continue to see what they have. Wow, guys, whoa, here's the, here's the, uh, the organ, and, um, and then like I said, just more stained glass over here, which is just nuts. So, pretty cool. And everybody, it just continues on and on and on. I mean, we have these other buildings. I don't even know what it is, but it is just, again, just phenomenal. Everywhere we look, it's just stellar. I mean, look at the, like, architecture. Look at the, like, the amount of history, the age of this place. Stunning. Further, just phenomenal, the, you know, this is just a view of the city. Like, look how intricate and crazy and those are just buildings and then you know up here is uh that's the castle up there off in the distance that's the big church pointy thing we were at crazy crazy and here we have is the scott monument man i wish it uh here, i'll turn that up just so you guys can see the, the details guys it is so crazy to like look at this i love the I'll call them like the intricate details on the spikes or the, well, I don't even know what you call them, points, etc. It is so cool though. What a beautiful uh, and huge monument. Children were tortured with limb stretchers, okay? And I can show you where they are so you can grow up in it. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Okay, right. I appreciate that. Yeah, tortured, children were also tortured with thumb screws. Stick out your thumbs. One thumb right now. Okay, I can have two. Thumbs, thumbs, thumbs. Good, good, good. All of you stick out your thumbs. Don't leave them hanging. Thumbs. Thumbs, thumbs. 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 Good, good. All of you. Wonderful. Okay, piece of life advice for you all. The next time a questionable looking man tells you to do something in the darkness of an undercity, don't do it. It's just good life advice. Good. Stick out your thumbs. I, I'm not going to do it. Good. Are you learning? Yeah. Well Peace off. Okay, bye. <laughs> Get away. Come on, child. Uh. Child. Oh. <laughs> Children, they were tortured with thumb screws. Thumb screws are basically a wooden vice that goes by the thumb. One piece of wood below, one piece of wood above, and these two pieces of wood are brought together to crush the thumb slowly. However, the witch hunter general, his version had a central screw. It would pass through the wood, pierce the nail, enter the flesh, crack the bone, and exit the other side. That way, while your thumb was slowly crushed, you would feel the metal grinding against your already shattered bone. He accounts how children would scream in tongues, how their thumbs would bleed black, clear signs of the devil's touch. Then he states that it would be beneath him to actually kill children, so instead he returned them to abandoned homes across the city, so sickness would kill them instead. And then he would turn his attention to the witch herself. Purple hair, terrible fashion sense, <laughs> walked with the shins, adds up. <laughs> Prison indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you admitted to sign reading, did you? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Next two of us. Yes. <laughs> no. I know, right? <laughs> no, this is prison. But do any of you notice anything that's missing from this prison? If you say prison as I am going to be. Prisoners. Oh. Uh, <laughs> gates? No, there's a... In there. No, this is... No. It's Cell a missing doors. A roof. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's context. We're moving on. <laughs>
Alright everybody, and after two very rainy, wet days in Scotland, which is very traditional of Scotland, we'll show you some last sights of Scotland before we head out. It's interesting because you can see here, so it's mid-August, and uh, maybe we missed some of them, but you can see some of the leaves. Uh, the colors of the leaves are changing, like they're actually turning yellow already, and you know, kind of brown and, and orangey as it's been really cooling off. It's been about 15 degrees Celsius the last uh, couple days, and that's like the high. The, if you're uh, in Fahrenheit, it is in the 50s pretty much, uh, 50s, and maybe 60s also, and uh, yeah, kind of crazy. So, long story short, crazy. And although you guys definitely cannot see because that barrier is so close to seeing, maybe you can, there you go, you can kind of see the top, guys. There you go, that is the ocean. We are on a very coastal drive of, I guess, Scotland. Well, it used to be Scotland, I think now officially we're in England, it might still be Scotland. Gorgeous, though. Gorgeous hillside. People pulling off to have a view. We might have to do the same here momentarily. But we took the coastal drive, and it's pretty beautiful, I will say. We'll uh, try to get a better view here momentarily, maybe when we peak this little hill. And let's see. Uh, yes. Voila. Look at the water. Look at the water. Gorgeous. That is beautiful, look at the, the, the hillside or the cliff. Very like steep, sharp cliffs. Which is what like, you know, Scotland, it's really, you know, Ireland stuff is kind of known for. Some of the like, you know, cliffs of moor and whatever. Being a volcanic rock. Kind of just makes those sheep, uh, sharp drop offs, so. Beautiful guys, but it is crazy. Even the mid-August here. It does seem, and the way the kind of plants are acting, is that it's fall, or becoming fall, so, as they say, winter is coming. Winter is coming. One last view of the water. Very beautiful. Crazy how big that ocean is. 